Good evening. This is the December 7th, 2023 meeting of the Needham Conservation Commission. I'm Dave Herrer, Commission Chair. Before we get started, I'm going to confirm that all members and staff are present and can hear me. When I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Sue? Uh, Reed? Oh, yeah, here. Fred? Here. Peter? Here. Allison and Paulina. Here. Okay, and Deb. Deb is here, but I yeah. think she has a uh... And Clay's here. So I guess Sue is maybe coming later and maybe Allison. Okay. This is an open meeting of the Town of Needham Conservation Commission and it's being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Healy's March 2023 extension of the open meeting law temporary provisions. All supporting materials have been provided to members of the commission and are available on the Cons Conservation Commission website. Public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda. Before we go to the first item on the agenda, let's cover a few ground rules for the effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. I will introduce each hearing on the agenda and then introduce the applicant and or their consultant to begin their project presentation. After conclusion of the applicant's presentation, I will call on each commission member to provide their comments or questions. Please hold until your name is called. After comments or questions from the commission members, I will solicit questions or comments from the staff and then from the public. Please remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate meeting minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and please state your name before speaking. Finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by roll call, call vote. Okay, first item on the agenda is the minutes from last, I think it was the uh, November 16th meeting. Um, any commission members have any comments or questions about the minutes? If not, uh, can I have a motion to accept the minutes of November 16th, 2023? Anybody? So, so moved. So, Second. Okay. Uh, let's vote. Um, Reed? Aye. Fred? Aye. Peter? Aye. Polina? Aye. And the uh, chair votes aye. All right. Next item on the agenda is enforcement and violation updates. We have anything, Clay? Um, no, we do have uh, just an update on our previous enforcement, but I've moved that over to the other business. Okay, good. All right, so uh, the first uh, hearing is uh, Sabrina Lake, Nuisance Aquatic Vegetation Management, DEP file 234-912. And I believe we have some uh, people from Ecotech to discuss this. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Paul McManus from Ecotech. Um, also on tonight, you'll see is Lloyd Geisinger. Um, Lloyd is um, one of the residents around Sabrina Lake and representing the, the neighborhood group that is uh, proposing the weed management and, and is the applicant in this case. So um, you did have a hearing a um, while back. I can update you um, since that time. Um, we've, uh, as you know, Sabrina Lake is half in Needham and half in Wellesley roughly. And um, we've had uh, several hearings um, in Wellesley um, as part of that process. Um, we had a, a, a bit of a tweak of the, uh, the proposal. You'll recall that the proposal is to do uh, aquatic weed management. We supplemented our proposal 
with uh, a provision to establish a naturalized buffer uh, around the lakeshore where it doesn't already exist. Um, in response to uh, some conversations with uh, Wellesley Wetlands Protection Committee, um, as well as we had two meetings uh, with uh, Deb and Julie Meyer, her counterpart in, in Wellesley, <clears throat> excuse me, as a result of that, we did a, a proposed a minor tweak for our naturalized area. In that, um, what's what's now uh, what's now being proposed is that we would identify every property owner would identify um, a 25 foot strip along the lake, and um, on many of the properties, that 25 foot strip exists in a natural condition already. Um, but where it doesn't, and where there's lawn, um, we have proposed that in every case, at least 90% of that 25 foot strip be maintained in a naturalized condition. And when I say a naturalized condition, I proposed that it can be either wooded, uh, it can be a shrub community where I propose a, uh, a, the ability to, to cut it four feet or, <clears throat> excuse me, or a meadow community with potentially annual mowing uh, down to to not less than six inches, and uh, so again, that would be twenty five feet, ninety per, minimum of ninety percent of of that area be maintained in one of those three forms. So, um, if you would like, I have um, I can can refresh for, refresh you if you like. I have some aerial photos um, and and some other information, um, but I know you did receive that uh, already. This has been continued. Um, we, we had one of the, one of the complicating factors on this is, is your commission and Wellesley met on the same night. Um, so it was a little bit tough for us to manage that. That's why we pushed out to the degree that we did. Um, but, um, so, um, that's really what we have, uh, before you, the, the, uh, weed management, um, is, is proposed that has been described. I can describe that again, if you can like. Um, there is no, I know in the past, um, there was an issue with some, some management from mechanical harvesting. Um, there's no mechanical harvesting proposed uh, at this time. Um, one other piece of information that, that um, I'd like to add for your consideration is subsequent to the filing of this, um, I was at a, a meeting of the Society of Wetland Scientists and Dr. David Wong from MassDEP gave a really interesting talk uh, related to um, aquatic nuisance vegetation in the context of climate change and increasing temperatures. And what he's been doing is monitoring um, what it's early, but he believes monitoring uh, the, the movement north of some of these invasives. Um, but a big part of, of what uh, he wanted to present to, to the group um, was the idea that, that it's virtually impossible to eradicate these invasives once they are in an area. Um, but in his, in his view, um, control of the invasives is very important, particularly in light of the increasing temperatures so that essentially some of these species have been, their, their, north, their, their northern limits have been controlled by temperature. Um, but as the temperatures increase, those northern limits seem to be increasing, um, which in his, in his view um, really uh, stresses the importance of, of control, even when eradication is really not, uh, is really not feasible. So uh, it's, an interesting, it's an interesting point. It's not something we had mentioned in the initial NOI, but but I felt worth mentioning. It was something. It was, it was a notion that that I had, um, you know, was interesting for me. So, uh, with that, I'll turn it over and and ask Mr. Chairman how you know if you have any questions, or like me to present any of the aerials or whatnot. Okay, thank you. Um, why don't we uh, see if the commissioners have any specific questions for you? Oh, Sue. Actually, I just walked in. Um, so um, I, to pass on me right now. Sorry. Okay. Reed, any questions, comments? Uh, no, nothing for me. Fred? 
Um, could you could you elaborate uh, on the area that would be involved in this? Because you mentioned a twenty five foot strip. That's a uh, in one dimension, what's the what's the the square footage or the or the area that you're talking about? Oh boy, um, it's it's essentially it's a 25 foot strip along the entire shoreline is what we've been talking about. I I think I may actually have. You mean a 25 not a 25 foot wide strip? Yes, 25 oh, feet. So I'm, so essentially, I'm sorry. I I I thought you were saying that each landowner would create a 25 foot strip no it's 25 feet around the entire perimeter okay okay that's correct I, I apologize for that so basically what i say is is from from the top of bank measure in perpendicular to the shoreline 25 feet and that runs so that that 25 foot offset line will run parallel to the shoreline I gotcha. And, and, and can I presume then that there would be no fertilizers used in that strip? Um, uh, that's that's correct. Yeah, that's correct. And the, the goal the goal of the strip really is to so it would be to naturalize the area. So do two things: you you eliminate the management, um, you know, to, lawn management that would typically occur, um, and and also those areas, uh, many of the properties slope down especially those on the west side, uh, property slope down towards the lake. And, and these areas in a natural condition, the, the intent is that you'd, you'd have increased infiltration there um, and, and treatment and uptake of, of anything that, that were to come down from above. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, Peter, any questions? Uh, yeah, I mean, I like, I like the, um, that aspect of it. I, is is the work, the management work in the pond itself contingent on the homeowners doing this work? Well, we've we've proposed we've proposed this as you know kind of as part of the part of the protocol where you know it's it's I'll call it a self imposed condition. Okay, so so this is something uh, that we can go back uh, when it's. A time to uh, confirm that the work has been done and determine whether or not this has happened or not. Right. It will be, it, it will be, you know, Reported I think immediately, ob immediately observable, you know, if one were to paddle around the paddle around the, the lake. Okay. Fantastic. And I'm sure we'll be getting um, mitigation reports as well. Every as year. Part of this. All right. Great. Um, so you have questions? yeah yeah i've had time to think <laughs> um first question um why 90 percent? what what's happened to the other 10 percent? the other 10 percent, we wanted to leave a little bit of a window uh for folks to have a for folks to have a path down to the water uh and perhaps a little bit of an area um that that they could mow that would, uh, you know, to allow in and out of a in and out of a canoe or kayak. Um, that's that's really that's really the the goal, you know, so that that people people wouldn't people would be able to get to the water from their homes, which are obviously set back, um, without you know with without needing to thrash through the brush. Does that mean one main path for all the homeowners, or is that a single path for each homeowner? It, well, it, what we've, what we, the way we've structured the proposal is that at le a minimum of ninety percent of this twenty-five foot strip on each property would, would so up to ten percent on each property could be a mowed path, or it could okay. be a little bit of a mowed area along the shore. Okay, and I just have a second question. So basically, you're proposing right now. Uh, to the control the um, for weed management, is it um, is it just algaecides that you'll be using? I know you said no mechanical harvesting, um, but which treatment is is proposed at at present? Well, there's there's several there's several potential things that are proposed. Um, what the the protocol the protocol is that uh, there be a survey uh, of. You know of particular issues. Obviously, if you have part of you very carefully, the way for water to get out of that backyard area. 
I'm, I'm not sure what, what, what where that was. <laughs> All right, um, you're, you're good. Okay, sorry. Um, so the, the proposal from the, the lake management folks is that they would go out, actually, you know, get in a boat, do a survey, uh, identify what problems might be there or not, um, and then and then propose management depending upon, you know, a particular species or you know, or group of species. So um, it's 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 really a it's a curative approach rather than a rather than a preventive approach. Um, if that if that answers okay. your question. Yeah. Yeah. So in other words, um, they'll propose management after a survey of the um, the the weed invasives. Is that correct? That's, that's correct. Okay. <clears throat> All right. I'm done. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. Um, uh, the only comment I have is uh, with regard to uh, the enforcement of this. Uh, is Am I correct in assuming that this 25-foot um, strip would be included in the order conditions and that it would also uh, be reported on in the periodic reports that are uh, submitted. Yes, I mean, I, I submitted a I submitted a written narrative um, with the expectation that it would be specifically referenced, uh, such as one would typically reference a, a site plan on a development project. It would be particular, you know, specifically referenced uh, in your order is is my expectation. Okay, and this really wouldn't impact. Uh, the trail on the on the western edge of of the pond, right? No, that was. In, in, uh, I'm glad you brought that up, Mr. Chairman. That was a question. Uh, that was a question that that uh, Wellesley asked as well. Um, and Mr. Geisinger, um, his, his property actually connects down at the south south end of the trail, where the trail runs up to the Guernsey Conservation Area, um, and. I um, we we were hoping to actually see a draft uh, order from from Wellesley today. Um, we didn't didn't uh, that didn't happen in, in time for us to talk about it. Um, but but that was I I think that Wellesley intended to specifically specifically you know allow and account for that to be maintained. So just um, to follow up on what Paul is saying, um, I did receive the draft order from Wellesley um, maybe like an hour ago. Um, so I'm going to review that and, um, you know, probably talk with uh, Julie over in, in Wellesley and um, then I will, I'll draft ours for the next meeting. All right, great. And that, that's a really nice trail. I, uh, I think it, it is. That's an asset of uh, Sabrina Lake, and for the public as well as as for the homeowners. Uh, yeah, and and Guernsey's Guernsey's a really neat place too. Right. Um, all right. Any uh, is there anybody in the public, Clay, that uh, has their hand up? I see Sue. You have your hand up. Was that? I'm from... sorry. I know. I'm trying to get it off. I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> Any uh, anybody from the public, Clay? There are no hands in the public. Okay, so um, why don't we close this hearing? Uh, so I would entertain a motion to uh, close the hearing for uh, Sabrina Lake Nuisance Aquatic Ve Vegetation Management DEP file number 234-912. So moved. Second. Okay, let's vote. Um, Sue? Aye. Reed? Aye. Fred? Aye. Peter? Aye. Paulina? Aye. And the chair votes aye. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. And I particularly want to thank Deb. Um, and it was really effective to have uh, she and Julie were willing to meet you know, put heads together. Um, so that, that I think was really effective and we appreciate it. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Right, so Thanks. Good night. Thank, thank you. For, thank you all. Good night. Good night. Yeah. Good night. Okay. So the next item on the agenda is 49 Green Street, DEP file 234-911.
Oh, this has. Um, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say it's been continued several times. So I'm just wondering is, is it good? Yeah, so I did talk to their um, consultant, and um, it's been continued so often because they've been waiting for the. Um, um, the golf club, their meeting um, to discuss the tree removal and where they would propose replanting. Um, I guess they haven't met. So at this point, they're going to re-notify the abutters. They want to continue to our first January meeting, and they're going to be removing the removing the tree removal portion of the filing and just. Um, just strictly um, work on the stream um, restoration. So um, that is their plan. I would imagine they'll come back for an amendment at some point if they do figure out the tree removal and replacement. All right, so we're gonna continue this, did you say January 7th? Is that- Yes. Or, or 11th? Is that the date, wait a minute. Uh, the 11th. Okay. There you go. All right, can I have a motion to uh, continue 49 Green Street, DEP file 234-911 to January 11th? Motion to continue. A second. Okay, let's vote. Uh, Sue? Aye. Reed? Aye. Fred? Aye. Peter? Aye. Allison? Oh, she's not here. Uh, Polina? Aye. And the chair votes on. Okay, great. Um, next, we have uh, order of conditions for 190 Edgewater Drive, DEP file 234-916. And this is something that Deb had uh, circulated earlier today. Do you want to walk through it, Deb, or, P or Clay? Yeah, I mean, I can I can pull it up here. Just a moment. Thanks, Clay. Okay, so. Um... Essentially, they're constructing the two additions. Um, one of them is a second floor addition that will only count towards the um, towards the stormwater. Um, but the main addition off the uh, rear of the house, they're removing the um, existing, um, what is it, a patio? No, it's not a patio. A deck? No, it's not a deck. It's a porch. Thank you. They're removing the existing porch and part of the addition is going to go over that area and the rest will go over the existing lawn adjacent to that. As far as the riverfront standards go, um, this is redevelopment and even with the additional impervious, um, they're going to be under the 10% thresholds that would require restoration. Um, but they do need to make an improvement in order to meet the riverfront regulations. So they are proposing that um, planting area adjacent to the, uh, the river. Um, and they're gonna be planting 24 shrubs in the 1410 square foot area adjacent to the stream that's currently lawn. So that will be an improvement and they're also gonna be infiltrating the um, the additional roof runoff, they're actually doubling the existing system. Um, so they're going, you know, way overboard on that. Um, so as far as special conditions, um, they're kind of standard um, under the planting work and monitoring. Um, it talks about the plantings. They're also seeding it with the New England wetland plants, um, conservation wildlife seed mix. Um, any planting substitutions, they'll need to run by staff. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know since that is existing lawn area that they're gonna be planting a portion of it if we wanna require permanent markers um, to kind of define that area. 
So I have that down as number 25, three markers, two on the ends, one in the middle. And then we have our typical two-year monitoring. And um, per DEP, we have number 30, no further alteration within the restoration area is allowed, except as may be required to maintain the area in its restored or mitigated condition. So I guess the main question um, is whether you feel as though they should put up um, permanent markers along the restoration area or not. And they also did need to request a waiver um, for they're only doing planting in the 25 foot buffer. Um, so they did request a waiver of the waiver fee as well. Okay. Um, does anybody have any comments? Raise your hand if you do. Uh, it sounds sounds good to me. I would think that you know the markers are a good idea. Uh, just because it is lawn, um, you know, going up to that boundary. So, yeah, Peter, you got a comment? Uh, just that I agree that uh, the markers are a good idea. Okay. All right. If there's no further questions, let's uh, let's vote. So first, we vote on the waiver, then the waiver of the fee, and then the issuance of the order. Right. The, okay. So, uh, can I have a motion to uh, waive the uh, prohibition of uh, work in the twenty-five foot zone for uh, for uh, Excuse me, I get this wrong. For uh, one hundred ninety Edgewater Drive, DEP file two thirty-four dash nine one six. So moved. Second. Okay, let's vote. Uh, Sue. Aye. Reed? Aye. Fred? Aye. Peter? Aye. Paulina? Aye. And Chair votes aye. Okay, next, uh, I have a motion to waive the fee for doing work in the 25 foot no disturb zone for 190 Edgewater DEP file 234 916. So moved. Second. Okay, let's vote. Sue? Aye. Reed? Aye. Fred? Aye. Peter? Aye. Helena? Aye. And the chair votes aye. Okay, now finally, let's uh, let's vote to issue the order of conditions for 190 Edgewater Drive, DEP file 234-916. <clears throat> So moved. A second. Okay, let's vote. Sue? Aye. Reed? Aye. Fred? Aye. Peter? Aye. Helena? Aye. And the chair votes aye. All right. Aye. Great. Um, good. Okay, so the next, next item is the uh, Eversource Reliability Project, DEP file 234-799, request for an extension of the order of conditions. And there is uh, somebody here, uh, is it Michael Howard? Howard? It is, Mr. Chair. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yep. Here you're fine. Good evening, folks. My name is Mike Howard from Epsilon Associates. I'm here tonight on behalf of Eversource Energy. Um, I will be brief. Um, we are here in front of the commission tonight to request a second extension to an order of conditions that was issued in 2018. As some of the commissioners may recall, the Eversource West Roxbury to Needham reliability project involved construction of a combination overhead underground transmission line that extended from the West Roxbury section of Boston to Eversource's existing substation in Needham over on Chestnut Street. Um, the overhead segment followed the existing Railroad corridor to Valley Road at Valley Road, the transmission line transitioned to underground construction. Uh, the project was substantially complete in 2021, plus or minus. Those lines have been energized. Um, the only remaining work is a segment of conductors that are no longer needed 
between Valley Road and the Needham substation on Chestnut Street because it's been replaced by the underground line. So that set of conductors or, or wires and the arms that support them on the overhead towers um, will be removed. It was anticipated it would be removed this year, um, but Eversource had to rebuild the work and deal with some contractual issues with the contractors who do that work. So it got pushed until Q1 of next year. Um, this order conditions expires in February. So we're asking the commission for an extension to keep the order valid so we can complete the work that's in the order. And then when it's done, obviously come back to the commission and close the permit out uh, with a certificate of compliance. I'm happy to answer any questions the commission might have. All right, thank you. Um, so any questions from commissioners? Sounds pretty straightforward. Um, I think so. All right, if there's no questions from the commissioners, let's uh, maintain a motion to uh, ex extend the order of conditions for Eversource Reliability Project DP file 234-799. We should probably, how long is it for a year? I think a year, Deb, should be, um, if you're asking me, I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah, um, no. yeah they're, I mean, they're supposed to be done already and they say they're going to be done in Q1. I have to think a year is going to be enough. I think a year extension would be fine if, if the commission is so inclined. <laughs> Thank you for asking that question. Yeah. Yeah, sorry to interrupt. Okay, so uh, let me... And, and Mr. Okay. Chair, if it's if it's helpful, the order, um, if you want the exact date, the order expires on February 13th of 2024. So the extension request would be to February 13th, 2025. Okay. I'll, all right. Let me restate the uh, the motion uh, that uh, I'm requesting uh, for the extension of the order conditions for Eversource Reliability Project to February 13th, 2025. That's DP file 234-799. So moved. Second. Okay. So vote Sue? Aye. Reed? Aye. Brad? Aye. Peter? Aye. Allison? Oops, sorry. Alina? Aye. And Chair votes aye. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Deb, I'll follow up with you for the paperwork. Sounds good. Nice to see you again, Deb, too, by the way. It's been a while. Nice to see you as well. I know. Enjoy, enjoy the rest of your night, folks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, what's next here? Uh, 320 Grove Street, DP file 234-908, request for minor modification. And who do we have to represent this project? Yes, hi, Diane from Field Resources. I'm here representing the, um, the applicants, Jessica Gelman and Corbin uh, Petro. And um, we're currently in front of you this evening due to um, a change in interpretation of the bylaw in the sense that this was originally approved by you all in November of this past year. Um, and I, if I could screen share with you all, is that okay? Sure, go ahead. Okay, let's let me just get back to that screen so I can um let's see screen share. Okay, so here we have the plan. Um if I could just get down to this if I could start with this portion of the plan. So this in blue represents what you originally uh approved. Um and with that, uh, the building inspector, you know, as we know, we have a new building inspector, and his interpretation of sideline setback is slightly different than the previous building inspector or commissioner. So with that said, um, the house that was approved by you all uh, currently does not meet regulation for setbacks. So with that said, um, the homeowner obviously panicked. This was brought to you. Um, by a different uh, survey company. And uh, we recently have picked up the project. So we're here in front of you this evening, just reviewing um, a potential modification that may be required because we also have our application into ZBA in, in um, that we are seeking um, uh, relief, though we don't believe we're gonna get it. So um, the uh, hindsight, the homeowner, um, 
does prefer this footprint. Um, so I think, you know, we're not quite sure which way we're going to go, but again, we're here seeking your permission in, in lieu that we don't get that relief from ZBA again, which we're not anticipating. Um, but um, with this new footprint, we obviously, you can see we're further away from the wetlands. We allow the buffer. Um, Diane, uh, we do, allow... do, you, do you mind rotating this to the left? Oh, sure. Let me just see. This is a rather big drawing, so it take uh, a picture, so it takes a minute. Um, but while that's uh, going to pop up, whoops, of course, I did it the wrong way. Um, <laughs> while this pops up, um, I just want to go over the numbers with you all. So what what you have approved currently is uh, 3,686 square feet of existing of the proposed footprint, um, and what we're proposing is um, 3,200 and 10, which um, uh, represents a 476 uh, foot reduction of uh, of the impervious. I'm sorry, I'm trying to get this. Um, so again, the blue represents what you've approved and the gray um, represent what we're coming for the modification. So again, the wetland, the 25 foot no disturb, is here. Um, so as you can see, um, this portion of the house uh, reduced significantly. It also allows for a little bit of the riverfront as well. So it does represent improvement. Um, with all this improvement um, in the reduction of impervious of again, 476 square feet, we are um, going to remain the same with uh, recharge and um, uh, um, um, uh, any improvements to the site in regards to the order that is currently laid uh, approved for uh, mitigation. Um, so I think it's a pretty straightforward request. And again, we're hoping for this modification to be approved this evening. So, um, um, for the order, uh, I don't know if I mentioned the DEP number is 2340908. Again, it was approved um, by you all in November of this past year. And with that, I will leave you uh, leave it open to questions. I just have one question to start off with. The, the, there's a gray area to the uh, right. This area? Yeah, what is that? That's a patio. And, and I think mm -hmm. it's, it's in the 25 foot no disturbed zone. That was approved, yes. It was previously approved? Yes. Oh, really? Okay. All right. Well, oh, let me ask the commissioners if they have any questions here. Um, Sue? I, I, and no comment. I, I mean, it sounds, um, it sounds like a better plan, um, unfortunately, for the owner. Um, I have no comment. <clears throat> Reed? Um, yeah, no comment. Sorry, I'm still trying to figure out this plan and what, but. Um, yeah, it's a bit no busy. Comment. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and it's no comment right now, but um, I, may, I may raise my hand. All right. Um, Brent? <laughs> The uh, these pro these proposed retaining walls, um, some of them are in the twenty five foot zone. No, they were approved as well. The only thing we're changing on the site is the actual footprint of the house. Everything okay. else remains the same. Everything else is already approved. Right. They're just they're pulling it further away from the wetland, and it's going to be smaller. All right. What what is the gray? I'm curious to to the uh, to the upper part of the drawing from the house that grayed in area there. What does that represent? That's representing um, an area for planting. For new new planting that you will do. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. That again was approved with you all. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, Peter. No question. 
Paulina? Uh, I just have a question. Um, I think I might have missed it. The blue hashtag mm -hmm. or hash lines, that's the new footprint. Is that correct? And the gray is the old what was approved? No, it's just the opposite. The blue oh, the opposite. is what was approved already. That's currently approved. And we're reducing it to the gray. Okay, perfect. Then I have no further questions. Thank you. All right, thanks. Um, I guess I don't have any questions, uh, assuming that everything else has previously been and, approved. Sure, and I do, I do have one question. And again, due to the nature of the project, the homeowners are seeking approval from you and ZBA. They currently believe this is the path they're going to go, but if they choose to stick with the existing footprint, can we just renege on this modification? Or because again, your meeting happened to come first prior to ZBA. I don't want you know we don't want them getting stuck um, one way or another. We want them to have the opportunity to make the decision. Again, it's been a whirlwind um, because again it with the other company it took some time to get approved after getting approved you know we went through getting the permits and that's when we identified you know the the change in uh the interpretation of of the bylaw not that there was a change in the bylaw just the interpretation of how it's read and and perceived um and we realized that the house was non-conforming so again the homeowners have kind of been in a whirlwind so we don't want to leave them you no, know. I, I think, you know, this isn't going to be recorded at the registry or anything like that. So I think if you just submit a letter um, stating the circumstances that, you know, mm -hmm. I think that that wouldn't be an issue. Okay. Just wanted to double check. Again, this is the path we believe we're going to take. Well, I mean, we could, we could approve this, you know, contingent upon it being approved by the uh, ZBA. As well. well, no, it's just the opposite. Um, yeah, but we will come. We will come back to you asking to revert back if if necessary. All right. And uh, Dave, it does look like the applicant is in the attendee side um, with their hand raised. So I'm just going to move them over. Okay. Are we there? Uh, I just we we just raise our hand just to answer some of the questions. But honestly, Debbie, I think Debbie nailed it. So um, we're just making the footprint smaller, maybe contingent <laughs> upon uh, we're going to the ZBA next week um, with the first approved plan. But everything else is the same. We intend to honor all of the improvements uh, and plantings um, to the conservation area, regardless, regardless of, of which um path we go down so we, were we just... did provide comments to zba um ahead of their their meeting so we're all on the same page great that was it if there are any context contextual questions all right thank you um any any other comments <clears throat> no, the... from the public there's nobody in the public nobody with raised hands in the public Okay, so then let's uh, let's vote to uh, approve this request for minor modification for 320 Grove Street DP file 234-908. So moved. Second. Okay, let's vote. Uh, Sue? Aye. Reed? Aye. Fred? Aye. Peter? Aye. Alina? Aye. And the chair votes aye. Okay, thank you, and uh, good luck with the ZBA. Yeah, good luck. Yeah. All right, thank you so much, and have a good evening. All right, take care. Okay, uh, next order on the agenda is 1297 Central Ave Enforcement Order. Yeah, so if you recall, this was a project where the uh, homeowner had cleared essentially a meadow area that was previously protected by an order of conditions in perpetuity. Um, 
last year, they completed the plantings that were required to restore the area. Uh, and we had provided an update to you um, earlier this fall. Uh, we did get a, a monitoring report from the, the applicant's uh, consultant. Um, they did confirm the, the seeding that had gone in that they used, um, not just the plantings that we were able to verify, but that there was the installation of um, six pounds of conservation wildlife seed mix and two pounds of the New England wetland plants wet mix um, dispersed in the, accordingly in the areas in the back. So they, they did confirm that the, the seedings had been done. And I think some of the speculation was that many of these seedings require a period of, of um, dormancy, cold dormancy before they, they um, come up. Uh, as far as, um, I guess, staff comments at this point, it seems that they pretty much complied with the enforcement and they're looking for relief for lifting of it. The only thing that that's still outstanding, uh, the original plan, um, the original order that was, uh, it had been COC, but the, the mitigation area required permanent markers and perpetuity, um, and, and those did not exist. They have staked out the area. However, it does not seem that they've placed actual permanent bounds of any kind with our normal markers. Um, this is what they've staked out. Uh, so the only outstanding thing, in my opinion, um, are that these stakes need to be replaced with either some kind of granite uh, monument or boulder, or I, I, if you're comfortable, we could recommend to them something like the bird boxes, but something that, that's far more permanent and can have fixed the, the conservation logo emblems that we use. Um, I believe there's four of these stakes, one kind of to the right, one here, and then two more going along the uh, back side of this retaining wall because this is that that meadow area that was supposed to be protected in perpetuity. Um, and you can they're actually kind of hard to see in this photo, but the the plantings are kind of along this this wet border. Most of them are actually further up, but those were uh, those woody plantings were reviewed last time we were before you with this. Um, I want to say in September. So with that being said, I I don't know that we're looking necessarily for relief lifting that enforcement order just yet. I just wanted to bring that update to you, see if you had any questions about the uh, the monitoring report that was uploaded to the Dropbox. Um, and if, if everything else seems satisfactory to you, we'll go back to the applicant and just let them know that we need the permanent bounds in before we can bring a formal request for lifting that enforcement. Okay, uh, any, any questions from any of the commissioners? It seems that um, appropriate boundary markers would be needed. That's that's how I feel. <clears throat> Good. Uh, anybody else? I like the idea of the birdhouses. In, in my opinion, um, I think the aesthetic of birdhouses is nice. I also think that with these monuments being located at the bottom of the retaining wall, something that stands up taller like a bird box may may help with that visibility that they're less likely to disappear at the base of that wall and be uh, forgotten about or otherwise encroached beyond. Yeah, that helps the birds too. All right, so we don't we don't need to vote on anything at this point. Right? No, I just wanted to provide that update and, and see if there's any input before we go back to the applicant just to, to get them finalized here. All right. Um, no other input. Um, the last item on the agenda is the uh, tree removal guideline update. Uh, we've been working on this for quite a while and uh, just a few, recently uh, the final draft was submitted to the town council who had a couple comments and we uh, responded to his comments in the uh, current final version, which uh, was included with, with the package. So if uh, nobody has any further comments on this, I would like to see us uh, vote to uh, adopt this update to the uh, tree guidelines. So anybody have any comments at this point? Yeah, sorry. What I don't. What, what were the changes that were made? I don't remember. Hearing uh, 
The no. uh, town council had two comments. One is uh, he uh, he wanted to add the word duly appointed uh, member of the commission to a uh, provision about uh, I believe it was about inspection of the uh, or uh, uh, not an inspection, but a uh, decision about whether a uh, a formal submittal would be required uh, because the bylaw does, you know, allow for um, a simple uh, process if there was like one tree. Um, so that was one change. The other change, he, he was uh, not confused, but I uh, didn't understand completely the uh, what a snag was. So we added a, a brief uh, description of uh, what a snag is. But uh, I think there's also a, uh, a little monograph about snags on uh, the Conser Conservation Commission website that goes into a lot more detail. And it does. Got it. Thank you. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, but that doesn't sound like it was anything really substantive. No, there were minor comments. He thought it was okay. I mean, it's really it, it's really not a big change from uh, the previous one. It just it clarifies a few things. I, I I'll tell you what got me thinking about that. It was about a year ago when we started this. Is that it? It the previous one or the the current one states like a replacement to be one and a half inch caliper, but everybody was talking about two and a half inch caliper as um, more appropriate replacement. So, you know, I just thought it would be a good idea to update it to, uh, to that anyway. And then, you know, we got more comments that came in. Um, so, you know, I think it's, you know, I think it's a pretty good plan. It's, it's probably more, um, um, I hate to use the word onerous, but I can't, I can't think of a better word, but it's more onerous than uh, most of the other ones in, in this area, in the Charles River Valley. Uh, so I think I think it's good. So uh, I'd like, to, like us to adopt it. I, I have a really stupid question. Um, I, I think I'm just in a brain fog. With the true rule guidelines, is that just within our 100 foot buffer or does it include the 200 foot riverfront? It, it applies to uh, our jurisdiction, which- Yeah, we don't have the 200 foot riverfront area under our bylaw. It's okay, so only with this, this applies only to when, within the 100 foot. No, I think it applies uh, to the riverfront area. It, we don't I, have that as a as an area in our bylaw. I know it's not in the bylaw, but it's in this guidelines, right? Yeah, I, I mean, my the opinion. Guide, I believe the guideline refers to areas under our jurisdiction. You know, I'm not sure that the guidelines are as binding as a, a provision in the bylaw itself. I think that if it were passed as a an amendment or an additional regulation under the bylaw. You'd have to also specify or amend the bylaw to include the riverfront. But since it's a policy, it's more a matter of how the commission will consistently weigh tree removal proposals within within their permitting process. Yeah, I mean, if somebody wanted to take us to court or whatever and argue, I'm sure they could do that. But oh, it's just a guideline. Thanks. All right, so uh, any any other comments? Are we ready to uh, to vote to adopt this? Uh, yes. Okay, so could, could I have a motion to uh, adopt the tree removal guideline final version 12.5.23? Uh, that moved. Second. Okay, let's vote. Sue? Aye. Reed? Aye. Fred? Aye. Peter? Aye. Polina? Aye. And the chair votes aye. All right, that's our agenda for tonight. Um, I actually just have um, oh, one yeah. other business item that's that's come up more of a, okay. of a um, 
a wetlands jurisdictional question, but more of a, the the tree warden for the town um, approached us regarding a tree that's within conservation property. Um, it's uh, associated with the parcel behind uh, Fisher or Sportsman Pond, I think it's called. Um, I'll pull up the, the map real quick. But there's a, a maple that is of concern to the neighbors. Uh, so here's Trout Pond, Fisherman's Pond, Sportsman Pond, um, whichever team you choose to go by. This parcel here is the one that's um, under the custody of the Conservation Commission. And it dog legs pretty much to frontage here on Curve Street. And there are butters on either side of this that are concerned about a maple tree that's located right about here. Um, the the uh, tree warden, um, Ed Olson, has had his um, arborist go out to inspect the tree a couple times and initially they didn't feel it was a hazard. However, uh, due to con repeated concerns about the lean of the tree and the, the location, given just the topography right here, um, they may be opting to just top the tree, just take out um, the top portion and leave a substantial wildlife snag, probably far more than the 16 feet we usually request. Um, just enough to remove that lean concern about how it might fall in the future related to these two houses. Um, since it is on conservation property, they just wanted to make sure that the commission was okay with them just just topping the tree. It would not be um, would not be felled in place. I believe they would have to have a contract to come with a crane, uh, especially because there are um, electrical lines uh, along the road here, as well as maybe extending to the, the back of that as well. Um, but they, they won't proceed until the commission is, um, I guess, granted permission to to address that that one tree. And I can bring up the aerial as well to show kind of what the area looks like here. Do you have a picture of this tree? Uh, I did. Unfortunately, the, the phone that I had it on, um, I left at the office. Uh, the maple's in here, and there's several trees. Um, we may actually have some previous photos of that site. How big is the tree? Um, that I don't know for certain. Um, it was not something extremely large. I remember being out there last year with the same concern, and there was a couple of trees the abutters were concerned about. Um, Eddie Olson already told them that a number of them really were not were not hazards. They, the town was not going to address those if they wanted to to pursue it on their own. They could come before us for anything that's on our property. Um, I think the maple was, I want to say maybe eight or ten inches in diameter. <clears throat> so it's not a significant tree. It's it's not it's not something that was enormous it's it's more tall lanky and and has a, a bit of a lean because this is a just kind of a row of trees that have all competed for light in this one dog leg that's not that's not owned by the either neighbor it's on the slope too right? it is it slopes um and it slopes up you can tell there's a slope when you walk by it or we had parked here on the street and kind of walked in here initially and, and this is quite a pretty dense row of uh vegetation and trees and then it all opens up further back where this is all forested. And, and this is where the actual wetland jurisdiction is. Um, this is clearly upland, but it was it was pretty rocky. It was pretty sloped um, both towards the street as well as you can see the topography here, uh, just running, kind of running between the properties. <clears throat> Are they proposing to uh, plant replacements? In this case, there wouldn't be room for a replacement, but they would be leaving a wildlife snag. Um, they'd like to leave it as tall as they can, so uh, it would certainly be more than the the ten to sixteen feet that the commission usually requests. It would really just be taking the top portion of the tree that has the the bend that overhangs. So they're not going to basically kill the tree. Is that? I'm I'm a little confused. Yeah, I think by topping it, it will eventually kill the tree. Um, I think the stump that remains. Uh, won't be in in direct trajectory to either of these houses once they've removed the top yes. top half of it, top third of it. And what's the justification for not putting in replacements? 
uh, I think along this this um, this dogwood, there's just there's not room. It, it is it is highly vegetated. Um, this is this is quite a, a naturally vegetated area. There are a couple trees and shrubs that are located on the neighboring properties. Um, the town portion, though, really is only. I mean, just approximately, it's about 10 feet wide. Um, and if you try to walk along this, I mean, you, you're pretty much climbing the trees to get through if you if you approach this parcel without stepping on either other parcel. Um, it is pretty highly vegetated. And they they have an arborist that's claiming that it's a hazard tree. Is that correct? Currently, the town is not claiming that it's a hazard. It, it was reviewed by the town. Um, I think that there was enough concern that it could become a hazard and there have been enough back and forth between the homeowners that the the tree warden is essentially looking for the option um i'm not sure if he's if he's totally sold yet on, on doing it but he doesn't want to pursue getting a contract to because the i don't think the crane work is usually done by the towns so they'd have to get a contract out to to top it and before he pursues that i think he, he's wanting to make sure at first that the commission would even uh, entertain that all right. Any anybody have any comments? Are you yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, okay. If you're gonna remove the top and expect it to die anyway, why not remove it completely right away? I, or maybe I'm missing something. So or the they want to leave a snag, right? They want to leave... leave a snag. It's not, but if it's leaning and the concern is it's gonna fall. Wouldn't wouldn't it be? I mean, you can still you can still remove it and leave it as like a downed tree, and it would still be beneficial to the area, but then less hazardous. I don't know. I just don't know what the regulate. I don't know what the rules are if we know that there is a tree that may impose danger, and even if we leave it as a snag and it falls on someone's property, if are we now responsible for that? I think. Um... I think the the idea behind leaving the snag is that the the height of the snag they want to leave is no longer an, an imminent hazard to the houses that it's no longer tall enough to reach the houses um okay. when it currently leans it, it kind of goes up and crooks out like this and so they would be taking the crook of it and so just just the snag itself i don't think is in a um in a, a target zone i guess you might call it of of the structures Okay, thank you. That makes more sense to me. I thought the whole tree was leaning and was posing. And Peter, Peter, you have uh, your hand up. Yeah. Um, so I guess my concern is with setting a precedent. Now, um, this this particular tree is within our jurisdiction, but not not because it's near a wetland, but because it's just within our jurisdiction. Is that right? Yeah, it's on on conservation managed parcel. Yeah, on conservation land. So it doesn't have quite the same sensitivity as taking a tree down in the twenty five or something like that. I mean, so there there have been cases in the past where where people have asked to um, take trees down in our jurisdiction, and we've been a little bit hesitant when the arborist when we don't have a certified arborist report saying that they're actually a hazard tree. And so I, I I do worry about the precedent of just sort of giving in to concerns of neighbors. And we know that homeowners increasingly are sensitive about just any tree um, and and are often oversensitive to trees that they think are leaning. But if the arborist comes in and says, oh, that, you mean it, that's just the way it is, uh, it's not necessarily hazardous because of that. Um, we're just sort of giving into the to the illegitimate fears of of the of the neighbors rather than really looking uh for uh, you know the uh the, the local ecosystem i i mean i i understand that the compromise in this case is to well it, if we have to remove it at least uh remove it in a way that has wildlife value so i mean i buy that camp compromise but i am a little bit concerned about about uh setting um uh, president for for other people to come before us. 
Yeah, I had the same concern. I mean, I, I don't think we should be just doing something because because homeowners are asking us to, right? So, um, so yeah, I had the same concern. I'm gonna I'm gonna go look at it, the three. Just to what? satisfy my own curiosity as to uh, what the issue is. But uh, I, I I'm sorry. Go ahead, Sue. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah. I was just gonna, I was going to say to, to I agree with Peter with setting presidents. Um, should should it require a certified arborist report and go well, from I, there? Yeah, I mean, I think I think we always said that you know, for a tree to be uh, determined or considered to be a hazardous hazard tree, that there would be a arborist report indicating that. So, if if that's what their claim is, then you know they should submit you know a report. If that's not their claim, fine, but uh, you know, it's unclear right now what. What they're, you know, really trying to do. Um, Lena, you got your hand up. Uh, yes. What What is the tree? What's the tree warden's opinion? And Clay, what is your opinion when you saw this tree? Do you, do you um, agree with the neighbors? I think there's been a lot of back and forth over the last year or two about this particular tree, as well as a couple other. Uh, dead snags between the two houses. Um, the warden has been uh, pretty hesitant to label them hazard trees. Um, the ones that were dead didn't seem to pose a falling risk, but he, he could understand those ones more. The concern over this one seems to be a relatively healthy tree. Um, his opinion was that um, if if he felt it was a, a hazard and he wanted a, an opinion of a another arborist, a third party arborist getting an assessment that way and then allowing him to pursue it on his own contingent on, again, the, the commission allowing for the tree to be removed. He didn't he didn't feel that he wanted ownership of that tree um, and removal of that tree. I, I was not there for all the back and forth with the, the homeowner. And I think this was the compromise that they were willing to come to was to essentially top the tree, but not fully remove it. Um, and I, again, I don't know that he was necessarily committed to that, but before pursuing that, that avenue, he wanted to kind of get the, I guess, the plastic of the commission, if, if that was your will. Um, as I mentioned, I'm sorry, I don't have the photos. I forgot the, the phone that I have the photos on at the office, but uh, I'm happy to, for the next meeting, get you more photos and get you more information on this, as well as either have, um, have Eddie attend the meeting or pass along a stronger opinion. Um, either in a narrative or, or something. Yeah, that sounds good. What's the address again? Uh, it is between 17 and 23 Curb Street. And is it, if we wanted to go there, is it clear where we could access it without trespassing? It's not very clear where the actual conservation leg is, except that it's the most wooded 10 foot strip between the two houses <laughs> um it does come in I'll, I'll pull this up again at kind of an angle it's not even perfectly perpendicular to the roadway uh i do believe that you can see the tree and the, the trees in question from the road though uh, so um great plan avenue is just running atop here if you come down curve street off of great plain avenue this is where the dog leg is as you can see, it's not a perfect 90 degree turn in. Uh, and I, I don't believe last time we were out there, we were looking for stakes or some kind of monuments that, that mark that off. I think we found something. Um, Parks and Forestry has more, both more experience with survey as well as more instruments to, to identify that, um, which they usually do before determining whether a tree is truly a town tree or whether a, a private owner is responsible for the tree. All right, thanks. I'm glad to hear that the commission is, you know, concerned about trees and not necessarily willing to give permission arbitrarily. So, uh, yeah, I think getting more information would be good. Um, 
Okay. Um, anything else, Clay? Uh, that's it for me. All right, before we close, I just wanted to mention that uh, given that uh, Peter is going to be leaving us at the end of the month, that uh, Peter is the current vice chair of the commission, and it would be great if we could uh, entice one of the commissioners to become the vice chair. So if anybody's interested, could you send a email to Deb and you know in indicate your interest and uh, we'll go from there. It's okay. pretty fun, you guys. <laughs> I miss you, Peter. I'm, yeah, I, I well, I mean this this has been a part of my life for 10 years. Actually, I, I counted wrong. It's 11 because I started in 2013. Um uh but uh yeah, I'll I'll, I'll miss being here. All right, well, we'll have one one more meeting to uh, say goodbye. <laughs> um, so uh, with that, it, uh, I have a motion to uh, close the meeting. So moved. Second. Okay, Sue. Aye. Reed. Aye. Fred. Um, Peter. Aye. Sorry, I was muted. I. <laughs> Alina. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Okay, thank you, everybody. And I uh, guess we have one more meeting before the new year on the 21st. So it does, doesn't look like that's going to be a, a busy meeting either. I think things are slowing down. Maybe there, there's less construction going on or, or something. I don't know. Uh, but. Uh, Two two new filings that'll be. Oh, right. oh no! I, I take that back. <laughs> one's an RDA, the other one's an amendment. So neither of them are a full blown, full scale project. Okay. We just want to keep you on your toes before the New Year's. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks everybody, and uh, good night. See you in a couple Thank weeks. You. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.